All right, so we've worked our way through Mendelian genetics, and we saw uh, what Mendel saw when he looked at the pea plants in, in, in his garden. And the traits that he looked at, recall, were uh, these, um, flower position, flower color, plant height, etc. And when he looked at these traits, he saw a dominant trait, and he saw a recessive one. And he saw that dominant traits obviously masked the recessive one, and it was pretty clear cut. It was pretty cut and dry across the board. All right, And we know that genetics isn't that simple. We know that genetics doesn't always follow the rule. There are exceptions to this, many exceptions. Okay, So in this screencast, we're going to talk about a few of those, the first of which is incomplete dominance. All right, incomplete dominance is a situation of blended inheritance. The heterozygote shows an intermediate, uh, a blended effect between the dominant phenotype and the recessive one. And the example I wanted to call out uh, for incomplete dominance was snapdragon flowers. Okay, the dominant phenotype is red. Okay, so we'll say big A for red, little A is white. So the recessive phenotype is white. So if you have a genotype that's homozygous dominant, that individual would show a red phenotype. Homozygous recessive would show a white one. But the heterozygote, instead of showing the dominant phenotype, would show an intermediate, pink. Okay, this is incomplete dominance. So this is not follow the rules of Mendel. All right, incomplete dominance, blending, blending between red and white, which shows us pink. Codominance is another example uh, that doesn't follow the rules. In this situation, you have more than one trait that's dominant. Right? Since we, we can't really have more than one, um, we have to use the same letter in terms of notation. You have to change our notation. Okay? We don't have more than one way to write a, a, a capital A. We have to use superscripts. All right? So if you look down, um, Roan cattle is a very famous um, example of codominance. And when we use our superscripts, um, you'll see if you look down here, um, capital C, here's our, our superscript R for a, kind of a reddish maroon coloring. Uh, capital C, superscript W for a white coloring. Both of these are dominant. All right, both these traits are dominant. So you remember you have two versions of every allele, one from mom and one from dad. So C superscript R, C superscript R is going to show the, the red coloring, just red, all right, or maroon. Um, C superscript WW will be white. And then the heterozygote is going to show both, but it's not going to be blended. Okay, as you can see in this cow down here at the bottom, you can see both red and the white. Okay, variations are shown together. Since they're both dominant, they're both shown, um, they're not blended. All right? Polygenic inheritance, the prefix poly means many, many genes. One characteristic is controlled by two or more genes. Examples of this, um, height, skin color, eye color, weight. If you look down here at this graphic, um, the genes that are controlling these, this particular trait, we're talking about skin color, okay? Uh, genes A, B, and C control skin color in this particular example. And here, the more of the dominant versions or the dominant alleles that you get, the darker your skin tone. All right. The more of the recessive alleles that you get, the lighter your skin tone. All right. And it's kind of on a continuum. And that's polygenic inheritance. The same would be true for eye color. The same would would be true for height. Okay. Um, this is polygenic inheritance. Pretty straightforward. Um, but you can kind of view it as a bell curve. All right. Um, sort of as a as a continuum, like I said before. Multiple alleles. Blood type is a great example of this. A series of three or more alternate forms of a gene, more than one of which can be dominant. So we have multiple alleles. In blood type, we have three possible alleles. Three possible alleles. Here, we use the superscripts once again. The possible alleles are I superscript A, I superscript B, and the line. So this is also kind of codominance as well, all right? Because this is dominant, this is dominant, and we also have a recessive here. 
All right, three different alleles. That's why it's called multiple alleles, obviously. Here's allele one, allele two, and allele three. All right, now, how do you get type A blood? Look down here. You could be IAIA. All right, um, it looks like this uh, autocorrected. This should be IA little i. I'm sorry about that. Okay, how can you get type B blood? You can be IBIB IB, or you can be IBI. I. How do you get AB blood? Your IAIB. Are you typo? Remember, this is recessive. Your little i, little i. Remember, multiple alleles, three or more alleles for a particular gene. One, two, three. Okay? And finally, sex linked traits. If a gene is found only on the X chromosome and not on the Y, it's said to be sex linked. And once again, we're using superscripts. And we put them on the X because it's on the X chromosome. Now, sex link traits are interesting because they affect females and males differently. Obviously, because our sex chromosomes are different, right? Males are XY. Females are XX. Examples, red-green color blindness, male pattern baldness, hemophilia, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. This Punnett square here just so happens to be for hemophilia. Hemophilia is, uh, an, is an X-linked recessive trait. Now listen, it's X-linked recessive. So it's carried by X little h. Okay? So this female, she's X big H, X big H, she would be normal. This male, X big H, Y, he would be normal because he has this X big H. This female here, X big H, X little h. She would be normal, but she's a carrier, right? Because she has this little h allele. This male, X little h, Y, he would have it, right? He would have hemophilia because he has the X little h. So look, these two individuals down here, this female and this male, they show us, you know, kind of they, they're the, the, um, kind of the token individuals for how um, this these sex link traits affect females and males differently. Females can get just one copy of this particular allele and not be affected. See this female has one copy of it and she's simply a carrier. She's not affected. A male gets it once and he has it because he doesn't have another X chromosome that can offset its effects. Does that make sense? Um, he doesn't have another one that could possibly be an X big H that could cover up the X little H. So if the male gets it one particular time, he's going to have it. If a female gets it once, she can have another X big H that can offset those effects, and she will just be a carrier. That's why men are more likely to be colorblind. Men are more likely to go bald. Men are more likely to be hemophiliacs, etc because all they need is one copy of this particular gene and they will have it whereas females need two a female would have to be x little h x little h she would have to get it from both parents whereas the male who would he get it from he's not going to get it from dad because dad's giving him the y he would have to get it from his mother to get any of these particular sex link traits okay? And that's it for uh, exceptions to Mendel. Thanks.